Welcome everybody to another Excel video demo. I'm on one of my favorite websites, reds.com, and we're going to be looking at how to incorporate this schedule here of the Reds 2016 uh, calendar and put it into Excel with a pivot table, slicers, and timelines. So I've already downloaded the uh, schedule and we're able to do that as a CSV which opens up pretty nicely in Excel. Here's a look at the, uh, the the import after I've got it into Excel. This is my first time looking at the data. I can um, show you that there are 215 rows of data. I can double click to, whoa, let's see here, usually that will, there we go, must have missed it there. That changes the, uh, the field size for each column, auto size each one if you select it all at once and do that. Okay. So there is some cleanup here to do. I'll first uh, begin with creating a table. Insert table. It's not necessary, but just to make it look OK, we'll do that. I'll call it uh, Reds 2016. It's the name of the table. The other thing I want to do is I want to look at trying to get a column of data for their home games and away games. Right now, that didn't come with one. So let me just go ahead and right click to insert another column to the left, and we'll call that column home slash away. Now, we're going to need a little logic here uh, to get home games, and use, I'll use the if function to determine whether or not the Reds are playing a home or away. So the logic that we'll use is if the game starts, as we're going down here, notice that the pattern is every away game we have reds at. So you can see reds at Cubs. And if it's a home game, it's going to be end with reds. Looking now, we've got some mixture of spring training games and so forth like that. So we've got a scenario where can't really end with the reds. We can start with the reds using the combination of, I'll just start here, combination of the if function with the left function. Here we go. I'm going to type equals if. And my logical test is going to be if the left four characters begin with reds. Left will return the specified number of characters and a start of a text string. So we're going to be looking at the subject. So comma four. Okay. Equals reds. So if that's the case, then that's going to be an away game. Now I've already have looked. We don't have any games uh, with the Red Sox uh, playing the Reds, so we can count that out. But if we did, we'd have to keep, keep furthering type Reds at using seven characters, including the space. So if the first four characters uh, on the left side equal Reds, then we're going to get the value of true. Then we'll know that that's an away game. Now we're under if false, so if false, then we know we want it to render home. All right, so when I hit enter, boom. Uh, every single field, that's the nice thing about a table is that it will auto calculate up and down. And so it's always good just to double check everything's looking good. Away, yep, Reds are in Dodgers on 5-24-2016. That's pretty cool. Awesome. Okay, uh, let's go further. I want to do a another field that breaks down the day of the week. So let me just right click, insert. We'll call this day of week. And let's see, it's uh, day. That gives us 1 through 31. No, I want weekday. 
1 through 7, whereas Sunday is number 1. Let me just verify that. Apply long date. Okay, so 4, yep, 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 yep. Yeah, 7 it will be a Saturday. Perfect, perfect, perfect. Okay, so those are a couple of fields there that we want to use in the pivot table. Now let's create that pivot table. Go forth, uh, insert, pivot table. The entire Reds 2016 table on a new worksheet. Good to go. Perfect. All right, now we've got fields on the left here. We're going to pull down and place the subject in the rows. And that's going to be every game. We'll put the start date above so we can see. We've got a couple of double headers for the spring training games. But if we get into the, the regular season one game at a time. Okay. All right, now on for the slicers and timelines. So let's create the insert slicer and look at the home away day of the week okay so just like this I can eliminate all the games for the Reds home games by clicking home let me create go back to my pivot table add a slicer with time 2013 has insert timeline start date and this is pretty cool that you can see kind of a, a method of picking the report period. So let's say we'll start off on, let's go with July. All right, so July 2016, the Reds are playing these teams here that we see here. On July 12th, how about that? The, uh, the All-Star game got put in there as well. Okay. If I want to see all the games that are on Saturday, I can click number seven. And those are the Saturday games. Clearing out a filter like such. Hit the X to do that. Okay, now if I if I wanted just to see the games that were going to be played at home in August without seeing the dates, I'll return back to my pivot table and I can uncheck or just drag the start date out. And now that gives me a pretty awesome quick glance at the games in August, September, and let's go to April. Awesome. So there's the home games in April. How about the away games? Just one click of a button. We'll take care of that. Now as far as customizing these slicers, we can try to sneak this slicer up there in A1. First, I'll just add some blank rows. Drag this up here, taking up a lot of space. Another way to get more space is change the slice tools to the uh, two columns. Okay, and then we can pull, we could do seven columns if we wanted to. if the days of the week like that. Changing the color is pretty easy. Pick a slicer color. Here I'm just going crazy on the colors. <laughs> I'd probably spend a little bit more time cleaning that up and all that but this is a pretty cool looking dashboard I think that gets the job done depending on what you're trying to work with. Pretty amazing. All right, so thanks for watching this uh, little video on how to create a pivot table from a baseball schedule using slicers and timelines. Thanks for watching.